Welcome back, friends. I uh, took a brief hiatus there. Now we're back with uh, episode four or uh, season two, episode one, however you want to look at it. I guess, uh, oh, by the way, if you're not familiar with uh, what this is all about, I am the survivalist guy. I will not reveal my name due to uh, ongoing contract disputes. However, what we're all about here is uh, learning how to survive in, uh, say, you know, you're having a bonfire and you go out with friends on a trail and uh, you get a little hungry. Um, we'll teach you how to uh, properly cut a birch tree, properly start a fire with your own two hands. Uh, we're not actually going to teach you that. Um, what we're going to do today, I guess, is Try not to contract Lyme's disease is what I'm thinking. And um, I don't know why he would do that because that, look at this area. Matt, you idiot. Take a look at all this. This beautiful creation. And you go and do that. We're trying to survive here, Matt. You go do that. All these trees next week, they're going to be gone. Now... <clears throat> On our trek here, we found that we weren't the first ones here. If you follow me, it's a bit of a trek. We're going to find something man-made. Little tidbit here. A lot of people think metal is man-made. Take a look at that. Coincidence? I think not. This metal has grown right on this tree. There's nothing I like more than having poison ivy rash on my legs at the end of a day. So you can tell by how old this tree is here. I'm guessing uh, sometime in the 18th century uh, the land dwellers back then built what you see, this contraption here, which I'm assuming is a well. Or some kind of uh, chicken neck cut off or thing. Ah, that's what it is. So as you see here, this is all the uh, chicken beak pecks. The chickens were afraid, they were panicking, and when the land dwellers back in the 18th century, they're trying to grasp them and trying to, just making sure that they get their little tiny chicken heads in this uh, bar here, and the knife would just clean cut their head right off. Um, and that was their meal. It would have, they would have their meal for, and it's not just chickens either, quails, turkeys, uh, small chickens. Um, any kind of poultry based meat, snakes, just put the, even human, I guess you could think, kind of creepy to think about really. Um, I would not recommend using this, it's inhumane. Um, and quite frankly, I'm afraid to be here. Uh, we should probably leave, Matt. I can hear people. Okay, back to here. Now, what is this? What do we got? Now this, speaking of 18th century, now if that doesn't say 18th century, <laughs> I don't know what does. As you can see here, nature. Isn't that beautiful? And there's two more people, what sick pigs. Oh, they're trying to join in. Oh, don't. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Disgusting. All right, Matt, just close up to here. Don't close up too much, though. I don't want the viewers to get scared. But what we have here, what I like to call the land octopus. Most people like to call it the spider, or in Spanish, of course, the spidre, or the spidero for the feminine language. Here we got it here. Is it? Oh! Son of a gun! It bit me. Matt, it bit me. It's starting to swell. I see it drew blood. It drew blood. 
Oh. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I have plans tonight. I finally found a place. The rent was cheap enough for me to afford it for at least this month. It's the last thing I need. Last thing. Cut, cut the camera. Cut the camera. Mommy? Oh. Yes, I got a boo-boo again. No, oh, it hurts. It hurts real bad. <laughs> I know. And I think I'm getting a fever, I think. Or it's just hot out, but it's, I'm hot. I'm really hot. No, it's like a, a throb. It's kind of going away now, but my friends are here. And I'm embarrassing myself. You mean tonight? Yeah. No, I, I like it when you cut the little pieces of hot dogs and put it inside. Yeah. But don't use the PC stuff. I want the I want the craft dinner. I want craft dinner. Oh, it hurts. It hurts real bad. <laughs> okay. I love you. I love you too. Okay. Yep, tell them I love you. Okay, guys, right. Bye. okay, so um, it was a, a false alarm. I may have actually not been stung. I think it was just a, a branch that had fallen off of a pine tree. Nonetheless, we're all good. Um, no first aid was given, mostly because we don't have a first aid kit. But we'll, I digress. Well, I guess off to the most important part of the day, my breakfast beer. Now, as you can remember, was it episode one? We learned how to open one of these things, so we'll find a stick here. Uh, here we go. Here's one. Count to three, everyone. One, two. There's a tab. What? A tab. Tab? All right. There's a tab on the top here. Finally, they made something for it to be easier to open. Trying can openers. Mmm. You know it's a good beer when it, when you waste half of it. Oh, yes. Here we are again, back to where it all began. Pickle Lake. Known for its briny flavor. And uh, just a quick correction, it's actually not the most dangerous lake in the world. It is the second most dangerous lake in the world. I was getting mixed up with Dill Pickle Lake. Uh, Dill Pickle Lake is somewhere in uh, northeast Nebraska. And here in, uh, where are we? Where are we, Matt, again? Mm -hmm. Well, we're somewhere, but it's not Nebraska. <sighs> Sit down, enjoy a nice cold brew right on Pickle Lake. There's a nice dock out there, wish there was some way to get out to it. I don't know if my hands are sticky from the high percentage of DEET in the bug spray or of all the beer that's spilt on my hand. Okay, so here's a scenario. You're out in the wilderness, you brought nothing with you. You prepared to be out for a few hours, but you find yourself out for several days. What do you do? You need a place to sleep. You need a place to properly wipe your bum. You need a place to uh, urinate, so you have to find a tree uh, that bears aren't attracted to. So we found a perfect spot here. Look at this. This 
bush here is actually known to wick away moisture so it's good if you're uh, overly heated and, and sweaty it's good for shade it's good for uh, the rain droplets will just kind of bead right off there so it's you can find it right there and it also acts guess what a bear is not attracted to this so the same place you sleep will also be the same place you defecate it's a wonderful thing this tr actually this isn't a bush this is actually attached to I was sorry I'm mistaken this isn't the this thing if you don't want to sleep under that bears are bears are attracted to that one Yep. Well, seems like if you're in this forest for a few days, you're SOL. We found a walking stick hollowed out from the woodland creatures. Perfect for if you're using your left hand. Ah, here we go. Lay rest under here. Perfect. If you can sleep standing up, this would be a perfect place to sleep. Uh, as far as defecating on, this trail here will gladly take your urine and roll it down to the stream. Or just, holy crap! <laughs> ah, yeah, ah, my back! Okay. Here we found a... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The microphone fell. Oh. <laughs> now, pop quiz for the viewers at home. Yes or no? Well? Just go to pick a lake. Sure, it's dangerous and infested with tadpoles, but you're gonna have the, I guarantee you, you're gonna have the same amount of fun looking at pick a lake as you will going to Niagara Falls. There's no casino here though. You know, sometimes surviving is taking in the nature. It's, you don't always have to find a place to sleep or find how to start a fire with your bare hands or how to, you know, fight a shark in the, in the mainland of the south. Yeah, sometimes it's just about finding yourself. And uh, finding oneself uh, is quite easy. You know, it's simple. You say it's just you and the camera crew. You sit down, you find a nice log, and you start to think. And you start to think, what am I doing here? What is there to life? I wonder what animal turded that out. 